practice exam. Question number one. Let me write that out for you. X squared minus 2x minus 48. So here we go. Practice exam number three. X squared minus 2x minus 48. Or 5x cubed minus 6x squared. Twenty five x cubed minus thirty six x. Eight x minus sixty four. Okay, so yeah, they want me to simplify that. What am I supposed to do? Bunch of factoring, huh? We have to factor all those. It's like four factoring problems, isn't it? So let's do it. How do we factor? Let me just get this out of the way. How do we factor that top? Do you remember that? So remember the two parentheses? So can you factor that top? X is in the front, and you want two numbers that multiply to be 48, add to be minus 2. So what times what is 48? Yeah, 8 times 6, huh? And, and how do you do the pluses? I haven't done the signs yet. How do you do the pluses and minuses? Do you remember? Yeah, the sign that's in the middle always goes on the bigger number. So minus 8 plus 6. That'll make minus 2 in the middle. Does that make sense? The sign in the middle goes on the bigger. All right, how about the bottom? What goes, uh, what, what can I take out? There's a GCF on the bottom. What do they have in common? Yeah, take out x squared. What does that leave inside? x squared times what? 5x and x squared times minus 6, right? Okay, then how about up here? What can I take out of these guys? What do they have in common? x. And um, what does that leave inside? Twenty five x squared minus thirty six. Is that how we doing? Is this okay? Because that could go boom and boom and go back, right? And then this one, what do these guys have in common? Eight x minus eight. And then this one actually will go one more step, won't it? That x stays in front. What do you do with 25x squared minus 36. 5x plus 6. I'm kind of running out of room there. Five x plus six. Five x minus six, huh? Remember all that factoring from that last test we had that had all that factoring on it? So now, let's come on down. We have x minus 8, x plus 6, x squared, 5x minus 6, times x, 5x plus 6, 5x minus 6, over 8, x minus 8. Look at all that. Bunch of factoring. I know I'm going kind of quick. I just want to get these done for you to have on the YouTube. So there we are. We factored everything. That was four factoring problems. And then, <clears throat> what do we do now? Cancel out. So 5x minus 6, 5x minus 6. Anything else? x minus 8, x minus 8. And this x 
cancels one of these, leaving x to the first, huh? Is that good? So what are we left with? We're left with x plus 6 on the top, 5x plus 6 on the top, <clears throat> on the bottom, 8 and x. 8 and x. And there we go. No, no, just leave it just like that. No, that's the way it'll look on the multiple choice exam. Question, so it's just a bunch of factoring, isn't it? It's just four factoring problems. Questions on that one? Fifth divide. Yeah, this is a division problem. Yeah, keep, change, flip, yeah. So you keep this one the same, change the sign in the middle, and flip the one on the right. So you keep the first one, change the one in the middle, flip the one on the right. Huh? You flip the one on the right upside down, make multiplication. So I keep this one the same. change to times, and then you flip the one on the right. You've got to flip it upside down. So it'd be x squared minus 2x minus 24 in the bottom, 3x minus 6. So keep, change, flip. And now what? Now, now it's a multiplication problem like the last one. See how the last one was times? So now that it's a multiplication problem in the end, it's just a bunch of factoring again, isn't it? Factor, factor, factor. So I'm going to do that. How do you factor x squared minus 4? x plus 2, x minus 2. How do you factor x squared minus 12x plus 36? A couple of x's. Yeah, what multiplies to be 36 adds to be 12? Negative 12. 6 and 6, both minuses, because that will add to be minus 12, and two negatives multiply to be positive 36. Good there. Times, and then what do we do with this one? Same kind of thing. Two parentheses. Yeah, when we have three terms, when we have three terms, we always do the two parentheses, don't we? See how this has... Three terms, do the two parentheses. Three terms, two parentheses. Well, even this one with the two terms, we did two parentheses, but that was easier. A little easier. So um, what do we have? X is in the front. What multiplies? So with the three terms, we always do the multiply add thing, huh? What multiplies to be 24? Six and four. Sign in the middle goes to the bigger. Minus six plus four makes minus two in the middle, doesn't it? We good there? And then these guys, what do you do with 3x minus 6? Factor out a 3. Factor out the 3. Good. And now we just cancel. So x minus 6 cancels x minus 6, at least one of them. x minus 2, x minus 2. Anything else? So we're left with x plus 2 times x plus 4 over 3 x minus 6. There's our answer. You could put the 3 behind. I put it, we normally put numbers in the front, but it doesn't matter. Either way is okay. We good there? All right. I'm going to keep moving, but this will be on YouTube if I'm going to ask a question. Yeah. Yeah, you can put the three in the back if you prefer. Yeah, it doesn't really matter. It's just normally we put numbers in the front. It's going to ask me for the LCM of 12 and 18. Remember how we do the LCM thing? It's not factoring. The answer is not six. It's LCM, not GCF. So you do the box thing. Remember that? Remember the where we put the 12 and the 18 in the box? Remember that whole thing? And then we say, okay, what goes into 12 and into 18? 
Six. You can do the six. Yeah. Um, you only have to do primes when it's three numbers. Yeah. So six goes into 12. Two times six goes into 18. Three times. What goes into two and three? Nothing. So we're done. Where's our answer? Yeah, you multiply six times two times three. What's that? 36? That's the LCM. No, what that is, that's a number that 12 and 18 go into. It's a number bigger than them that they divide evenly into. It's the lowest common multiple. It's the lowest number that 12 and 18 go evenly into. They also go into 72 and other numbers, but that's the lowest number they go into. All right, number four. Um, so I'm going to go straight on that one if you're good. 7x minus 7, give a little room here. 7x minus 7 over x squared minus 1. Whoops. Minus 1 minus x over 1 minus x squared. Yeah, this is a bad one. This is a bad one. All right, we have a couple issues here. These guys need to be turned around, don't they? Yeah, remember when you, when you turn things around? What if it was adding, what if it was 1 plus x over 1 plus x? What was adding instead of subtracting? What would I do? You need to turn around. You don't need to do anything, right? Because the order of adding doesn't matter. You know that, right? Just think about 3 plus 2 or 2 plus 3. It's 5 either way. It doesn't matter at all, huh? But for subtracting, that, that's different, right? If I have numbers and I have 7 minus 3 and then I go 3 minus 7, that's 4, that's negative 4. So it changes the sign is what it does. You've got to put a negative there, don't you, when you turn around two things subtracted. Exactly. So what we'll do then is we'll say this is minus 1 and turn it around. This is minus 1 and turn it around. And then what are those two negatives going to do? Cancel out. See what happened there? So whenever you flip around, whenever, so let me just remind you, when x subtracted at the back, subtracted at the back, turn around and put negative 1 in the front. So that's what I just did. I took this and turned it around. I took that and turned it around and put a negative 1 in the front for each of them. And they canceled. So what I have now, I have 7x minus 7 over x squared minus 1 minus x minus 1 over x squared minus 1. We good to there? I just turned them both around. Negative 1's popped out, and I canceled them out. Now, I gave you one other important rule here. This one has a lot of tricks to it. What did we learn about subtraction? I said never, yes, never subtract fractions. Instead, let the subtraction distribute to the upper right all terms, and then add the opposite. Yeah, so that minus is going to go boom and boom, right? Negative, so you never leave a subtraction in the middle of fractions. It's just really easy to mess up. Instead, you add the opposite, so it's going to become plus, and I'm going to make minus x plus 1. Are you with me? See how I made the opposite of both of those things in the upper right? The opposite of regular x is negative x. The opposite of negative 1 is positive 1. See how that came down as opposite? Right? You tracking with me? So I'm adding, and see how this, this negative sign became adding? You add the opposite. Because that's the same thing, isn't it? If I have 7 minus 3 and I go, no, 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 I'm going to go 7 plus negative 3. That's still 4. 
If you add the opposite, that's the same thing as subtracting. Right? Instead of subtracting a regular 3, add a negative 3. Same thing. Doesn't matter. Well, then why would we do it? Well, it's easier. It's way easier to do the plus. It's for our convenience. Are we good to there? Questions I can answer so far? We're about done with it. Now they have common denominator, don't they? So I can combine them. 7x minus 7 plus negative x plus 1. Just combine them into one fraction, huh? Once the bottoms match, you can make them one fraction. Okay, and where does that leave me? 7x minus x, 6x. Minus 7 plus 1, minus 6. Over x squared minus 1. By the way, you could have factored the denominators in the beginning if you wanted to. We're going to need to do it now. We're almost done. Last step, it's been a long one. Last step, we do need to factor top and bottom. Do you know how to factor those guys? How do you factor the top? Take out a 6. How do you factor the bottom? x minus 1, x plus 1. See those cancel? Last step, 6 over x plus 1. Woo. That was, a, was a lot to that one. These are messy. These are messy, but you can learn them. But it, it's going to take a lot of time. Time with Wendy, time with me, time looking at those YouTubes and trying to imitate the problems again and again. And again. That's what I had to do, too. I had to just go over my notes again and again and again, redo the problems again and again and again and again. So you can do it. You can learn these things, but you just have to practice them. You know, they're out there on YouTube. So you could like start this problem. This is a really hard one. You could say, okay, I think I have it. Try it You know, later today, tomorrow. Try this one. Try writing down the beginning of the problem and try doing it on your own. If you get stuck, look back at the YouTube as I coach you through all these steps and then finish it, and then try it again on your own. Basically, get to the point where you can do it, top to bottom, without notes. Use the notes to help you get there. Use the YouTubes to help you get there, or Wendy or myself. All right. All right. Um, so again, I'm not going to subtract. I'm just going to move that up there, huh? Remember, we never subtract. Take subtraction to the upper right and make it adding... The opposite. You tracking with me? Never subtract. Instead, add the opposite. It'll be way easier. You won't tend to lose your negative signs. It's, it's, really, it's really to help you. So never subtract. Instead, add the opposite. Okay. Now, let's factor those denominators. So two parentheses, X is in the front. What numbers multiply to be 55? What times what's 55? 5 times 11. Sign in the middle goes on the bigger. What, and the other sign could be the same or opposite. What's it going to be to make minus 16? Also negative, And two negatives multiply to be plus 55, huh? See that? And then the other one, two parentheses. X is in the front. What multiplies to be 16 adds to be minus 17. 6 and 11, again, both minuses, huh? Makes minus 17 in the middle. Two negatives multiply to be positive. 66 at the back. All right. Now, uh, remember the steps. I gave you steps for this. Um, now, on this test, one of the things that's going to tend to confuse people is sometimes we do top and bottom. Sometimes we do left and right. Or, or only top. Maybe, yeah, maybe that rings a bell better for you. Sometimes it's just top, top, top. Hey, Wendy. Sometimes it's just top, top, top. Sometimes it's top and bottom. How do you know? It's all about whether there's an equal sign or not. No equal sign here, huh? No equal sign. So, so I'm not thinking left, right. Instead, I'm thinking top, bottom. Are you tracking with me? Let me write that down. No equals. So top, bottom. That makes sense. When there's no equal sign then the kind of balance you're keeping is same thing, top and bottom, top and bottom. If there's an equal sign, 
Then you have a left and a right. I don't care about top and bottom anymore, and those cameras we'll do in just a minute. Then you just do left and right, only the tops, right? We did a bunch. Those are more recent in your memory, probably. We've done those in the last week. But it's been a few weeks since we've done these top-bottom ones. So you, you, you all see what I'm saying? If there's an equal sign, then you have left and right, and that's all. You're not, you're not caring about the bottom. You're just doing the same thing, left and right, only top. But when you don't have an equal sign, you don't have a left and right, Right? These are not equal to each other. If I, if I only did something in the top and something in the top, that'd be just illegal. You can't be changing them. They're not equal. They're not equal, so you can't be, like if I said, oh, I think I'll just, you know, you, know, you might look go, this one, needs, this one needs an X minus 6, and this one just needs an X minus 5. You can't do that. You can't multiply only the top. What gives us the right to just come in and, Multiply the top of a fraction by a number. They're not e equal. Now, if they, if they were, if they were equal, then you could do, you still couldn't do that. That's still, what I'm doing there is crazy. You still, you'd have to do, you'd have to do both of them. There, that would, if it was equals, that's what I would, well, no, they're still not the same, right? whatever. I'll quit beating the drum about what else I would do different. And just say, they're not equal. So we're not thinking left, right. We're thinking top, bottom. So what am I going to do to the top and the bottom? Same thing, top and bottom, so I don't change the fraction, right? Plastic surgery, I call it. It'll remove the wrinkles. It'll look different, but still be the same value because you do the same thing, top and bottom. You're not changing it. What am I going to give it so that it's the same as the other? I'm trying to make them the same on the bottom, right? What is it missing? What's it? This is where you compare to your neighbors. What's it missing? X minus 6. Top and bottom. Not just top. Top and bottom. So I don't change that fraction, right? If you're doing the same thing top and bottom, I'm not changing that fraction. It'll look different when I'm done, but it won't be different because I did the same thing to the top and the bottom. Now the other one, what am I going to do to the other one? Top and bottom. What does he need to be the same? X minus 5. See how this denominator and this denominator have the same three pieces now. See how I've made the two denominators common, same? Y'all track it with me? They both have the same three pieces. So I did top and bottom of this fraction, top and bottom of that one, top and bottom, not left and right, because there's no equals. Not top only, uh-uh. Top and bottom, because there's no equals. I got to do top and bottom. When there's an equals, then you're doing left right. So this, there's no equals here. It's top bottom. Okay. Now the two denominators match now, don't they? Which is great. That's what we wanted. Let me just write it in there. X minus six. Well, let me put a little more room on. I think we got two more steps. Let me get rid of all this scribble, scribble. So. Yeah, the two denominators match now. It's x minus 6, x minus 5, x minus 11. Any order, doesn't matter, but it's those three pieces. They both have them. Now, what happens on the top? Just bring it down. x minus 6 times 6x six minus 5x times x minus 5. We good there? And now what do we do? We're done with the bottoms at this point. Once you've got common denominator, you're done with the denominator. That was the whole goal for the denominator. We're done. Now all of our work is on the top, isn't it? On the top now, I distribute and distribute. So I get 6x squared minus, whoops, 36x, huh? Minus 5x times x, minus 5x squared, plus 25x, over x minus 6, x minus 5, x minus 11. Okay, we're almost there, common, de we're not, the bottom doesn't change, I just keep recopying it, huh? We're done with the bottom, once we reach common denominator. Now let's gather like terms in the top. 6x squared minus 5x squared is 1x squared. 
And then minus 36x plus 25, is that what, minus 11? Done. Not easy at all, huh? So we're done. Oh, no, we can do one more step. Oh, I'm tired of these problems. There is one more step. You're right. Claudia's looking at it. You're right. Take out an X on the top, huh? Ugh. All right, has everybody got that copy down? There is one more step. I wanted to be done. There's one more step. These are long and difficult. So let's take that top. So what was the bottom? X minus 6, X minus 5. Yeah, Claudia's right. Everybody got that all copied down? So now on the top, what can we, what can we do up there? X, take out an X. Like that. And boom, boom, huh? X over... X minus 6, X minus 5. Look at that. That was a lot of work, right? You can learn it, but it'll take some time. Well, it depends on where you're at, but for, for, for some people, it took me a lot of time. I had to do them again and again and again. So that's a big, long problem. You've got it on YouTube. It is in your power to learn that. It is, but not without a lot of time for some of you. You'll need to Spend a lot of time trying it again, trying it again, looking at the YouTube, trying it again until you can do that. Make sense on that? I better move on. So here's the question, and we never subtract. So see if you can do that step first off. Remember, grab that subtraction symbol in the middle and distribute him to the upper right. Add the opposite, just so that we don't forget negative. I know none of this might seem easier, but it's a little easier than the other way. So it hits there and hits there, right? That's what we always do. We never subtract. Instead, take that subtraction symbol to the upper right, add the opposite. It's the same as subtracting, but it'll be easier for us. So it'll become add. This will become plus, and this will become minus y plus 5. It's the opposite of both those guys in the upper right, huh? We're adding the opposite. That's the same as subtracting. All right. And now, what, what do we do next? Factor those denoms, right? You getting to be pros at factoring? Lean, mean factoring machines? So what multiplies to be 32 adds to be minus 4. What times what's 32? 8 times 4. How can it add to be minus sign in the middle? Goes to the bigger. Minus 8 plus 4. Right? Over here, y squared minus 16. Plus 4 minus 4. That's right. Difference of squares. All right. Now, is this a left-right question or a top-bottom question? Top-bottom, because there's no equal sign, right? Again, no equal sign, no left-right. It's top-bottom. No equals, it's top-bottom. So you bring in the parentheses, and you go to this guy first off, and you go top and bottom, give him the same thing, top and bottom, so he has whatever the other guy has. What does the other denominator have? What does this other denominator have? He needs a y minus 4, huh? So give it to him top and bottom. And how about this guy? What does he need? We're going to make the two denominators the same, aren't we? By filling in their gaps. Giving them what they're missing. So what does he need? Y minus 8. See how these three pieces and these three pieces are the same now? We've made those two denominators common. They have the same three pieces, don't they? Common denominators. Top and bottom to make common denominators. All right. So now, 
come on down and we say y minus 4, y minus 8, y plus 4, whatever order, doesn't matter. Bring down the other stuff. y minus 4 times 4y minus 1 plus minus y plus 5 times y minus 8. We got to multiply all that mess out. Yuck. It's a big mess. We got a foil. So we're done with the bottom, aren't we? As soon as we've got common denominator in the bottom, we're done with the bottom. No messing with the bottom. But on the top, we need to do it. So let's, let's multiply out the top. So I'm going to do that. So the y goes to both. 4y squared minus y. The minus 4 goes to both. Minus 16y minus 4. Now the minus y goes to both. Minus y squared plus 8y, and the 5 goes to both. Plus 5y minus 40 all over y minus 4, y minus 8, y plus 4. What a mess. Okay, I think we have one more line and we can be done with this one. Of course, I said that last time it was wrong. Let's see, I think I can wrap it up right here. Claudia, don't tell me I'm wrong. I'll be really unhappy. Even if I am wrong, okay? Let's just keep it a secret. <laughs> no, I, th I don't think this is factors. All right, so let's gather like terms up there. So what do we got? 4y squared minus 1y squared. 3y squared. Now look at all those y's. We gotta be we gotta be wise. Sorry, that's just a dumb pun. So minus one y minus sixteen is minus seventeen y plus eight and five is plus thirteen minus seventeen plus thirteen. What is last here? Lastly, minus four and minus forty minus four. We're done. That's terrible. That's not gonna factor. No way. That's a terrible one. What's that? Uh, this, you're saying the minus 4y in the middle should be plus 4y? No, the negative 4 should be a purple card. Oh, I did mess up, didn't I? Thank you. That should be a plus 4, minus 40 would be minus 36, huh? Thank you. Thank you. That should have been a plus 4 right here. Yeah, so it's even easier for me to mess up. So, yeah, so this takes practice, doesn't it? So, again, this is in your power, but you're going to have to exert your power, maybe all your might. You're going to have these are on YouTube. You're going to have to spend hours, maybe, blank piece of paper, trying these things again and again and again, looking at YouTube. Yeah, Vincent. Isn't that also the factor thing? No, it's not. Don't even mess with it. Not even going to try. No way. That's just ugly. No way. Questions on that one? We good? All right, so to number seven we go. R plus five over R is negative six, right? Yeah. All right, so it just says solve. Solve. Okay. Fractions, huh? This whole test, by the way, is fractions. Not the whole test, but about half the test is fractions. This, this test is fractions, fraction rules, and square root rules. And a bunch of word problems. Not easy. So fraction rules, square root rules, and word problems. So what are, so here we have another fraction. So what have we learned about fractions? Is this one going to be, well, what we've learned is it's either top, bottom, or left, right. Whenever you have fractions, either top, bottom, or left, right. Is this one top, bottom, or left, right? How do you know it's left, right? Equal sign. See the difference between this one and the last couple. Equal sign multiply LCD tops only. Right? Because you're doing it on the left and the right, not the top and the bottom. So that's why I'm not messing with the bottom. This isn't a top bottom. I have an equal sign. I have a wall. The left side equals the right side. So if the left side and right side are equal, 
I'm free to just multiply the top. I'm free to multiply by a million if I want to. The left equals the right. If you treat them the same, they'll be equal afterwards, no matter what you do. That's reasonable. That makes sense, doesn't it? If two things are equal and you treat them the same, they got to be equal when you're done. So that's why we now have freedom to only do the top. That's what we'd have rather have done all along. That's easier. But I couldn't do it on the other ones because I didn't have an equal sign. I had to do top and bottom. I couldn't do just the top. But here I have freedom. Do you feel your freedom? With an equal sign, you can do whatever you want as long as you do it to both sides. If they were equal before, treat them the same, they'll be equal after. So I'm, I'm free to do only the top which is much easier. So what is that? What am I going to do with the top? Common denominator, huh? What is the common denominator? What's the only thing under a bar? R. This is the only thing under a bar. So R, R, R. You've got to do all the terms left and right, though, right? They're equal. You've got to treat them all the same, so it'll still be equal. But only the top notice, not the bottom. I have freedom to do just the top. Everybody see the difference between those two approaches? Okay. Well, I wish I wouldn't do that. Cancels what I meant to do. I didn't know I was on a racer. So those R's cancel, don't they? And we get R squared plus 5 is minus 6 R's. Everybody see what happened there? Why didn't the R's cancel on the left like they did in the middle? Yeah, because over here, this one is under a bar. Things under the bar cancel with things in the top. But these guys, they're not under a bar. Neither one of them is under a bar. They just multiply. See the difference? Okay, now the fractions are gone. That's why the equal sign problems are easier. Fractions are gone after one step. No more fractions. Much nicer. Anyway, how do we solve? But now we have an R squared equation. Remember, I keep saying I want you to know this like a knee-jerk reaction. Somebody wakes you up in the middle of the night, and they say, X squared with an equal sign. What do you say? Why did I take that crazy class? No, you don't say that. You say, make it zero. Hit a zero. I hope you know that. So the minute you see R squared with an equal sign, step one is get a zero. Step two is factor. And where do you get a zero? On the opposite side of r squared. So where's r squared? r squared's on the left, so I'm going to get a zero over here on the right. Right? So how are you going to do that? You just grab this guy and move him over to the middle, huh? So we get r squared plus 6r plus 5. Right? That minus 6r jumps over becomes a plus. And now we factor r, r, what multiplies to be 5 adds to be 6. 1 and 5, both plus. Right, they'll add to be 6, they'll times to be 5. So step 1, get a 0. Step 2, factor. Step 3, each one gets their own 0, don't they? I was just going over this with my pre-calc students the hour before you came in. All the way up to pre-calc, it's the same thing. When x squared shows up, I was reminding them, get a 0. Factor, so get a zero. So then each of these get zero, right? Because if two things times to be zero, either one could be zero. So then you know the drill, jump it over, negative one, jump it over, negative five, two answers. Done. See the difference? This is easier, huh? Equal sign problems are easier. E, e, trying to keep your memory there. Equal, easier. Equal sign are easier. Why? Because you only have to do the top. You don't have to do top and bottom because you have an equal sign. You can do left and right, anything you want. doesn't matter about bottom. Questions on that one? Okay, so equal sign problem again. What's our first step on this one? What needs to be done with those denominators? Got to factor them, right? They need to be factored. Can you factor those denominators?
So what multiplies to be 9 adds to be minus 10. 9 and 1, both negative, right? Adds to be negative 10, multiplies to be positive 9. Other side, how do we factor 4x minus 36? Take out a 4. Good on that. Now, this is an equal sign, so multiply LCD tops only, right? Because we're thinking left, right, not top, bottom. It's left, right, not top, bottom. So I'm going to put the LCD in the top, top, top. What is the LCD? All of them. One of each of them, huh? Yeah. One of everything. That's where you're shopping, and so you're buying one of everything, right? So I'm going to buy one of these, one of these. already got one of those. And a four. already got one of those. So I'm going to do a four. X minus nine. X minus one. Four. X minus nine. X minus one. 4x minus 9x minus 1. See how that was one of everything that was under bars? Right? One of everything. That's the LCD. Top, top, top. Because we have an equal sign. Doing the same thing left and right. All right, and so then we cancel out, don't we? Am I going too fast? Is making sense? LCD, top, top, top. So x minus 9's cancel, x minus 1's cancel. What's left? 4 times 4 minus. x minus 1's cancel. What's left? 4 times x minus 9 equals. 4's cancel, x minus 9's cancel. What's left? 1 times, whoops, x minus 1. Here's the equal sign separator. We good to there? Much nicer, huh? No more fractions after a step or two. So then we say, okay, 4 times 4 is 16. That minus 4 is going to distribute. Minus 4x plus 36. That 1 is going to distribute. Gather like terms, 16 and 36, what is that, 42, 52, like that, yeah. Now, is this x squared? Are we looking at x squared right now? No, it's not x squared. It's not like, it's not like this one that had r squared. So I had to, you know, R squared strategy, get a zero factor. Each one gets their own zero. That's if you got squared. Here I don't have squared. I just have minus 4x, just regular x, and regular x on the other side. No x squared. I'm not going to get a zero. None of that business. Just get rid of one of those x's, huh? Just solve for x. It doesn't really matter which one you get rid of. Um, the lower one's minus 4x, so I'll do that, but it doesn't really matter. I'll add 4x besides gonzo. Just get rid of one of them. Do the opposite of one of them. Remember all that kind of stuff? So we got 52. What is 1x and 4x? 5x minus 5. Add the 5 to both sides. Oh, why'd that become? Yeah, it's going too quick. Spacing out there. Uh, at the one, thank you. I'm tired of this problem. All right, add the one, add the one, Gonzo. All right, so what do we got? Fail, bring it over here. 53 is 5x. Last step, divide by five. There it is. 53 over 5. You can do this. I can't. But you can do this with enough practice. You just got to go over and over and over this. You got the YouTube.
together. It takes them four hours. How, they want to know how long for each one alone. So we want to find George alone, Tim alone. All right, so there'll be three where you, just like you see on the practice exam, it'll be the real, same thing um, Monday in the real exam, there'll be three word problems. One of them will be this kind. What is this kind? Working together. Working together. What's the formula for working together? Yeah, 1 over A plus 1 over B is 1 over together. Remember how we talked through that formula when we came up with it? Yeah, so there's the formula. There'll be one working together, one travel, you know, cars, trains, that kind of thing, and one ratio. Those are the easiest kind where you just do the cross multiply to equal fractions. So it'll be three word problems, one working together, one ratio, one travel. All right, so here we go. George can cut the wood six fewer hours than Tim. Let me give you... All right, so um, uh, what do we do? So what do, you, what do you do in any word problem if they go six less? That's what fewer is, right? Less. They go blah, 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 six less, six lower, six fewer, six smaller. What do all those mean? X minus six, huh? That's six less. So that means one of these things is X minus, it doesn't matter if it's A or B, whatever. Just pop it in A. And that means the other one's plain X. Remember that? Every word problem. If they go blah, 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 more or less, more you add, less you subtract, X plus or X minus, and then the other spot, there's always two spots, is plain X. And then what's the together? Yeah, together takes them four hours. There it is. All right. How do we solve an equation like that? Left or right. Yep, it's an equal sign. Left, right, only the tops. LCD, top, 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 right? What is the LCD? Everything. You just grab the 4, grab the X, grab the X minus 6. 4, X, X minus 6 in the middle. 4, X, X minus 6 in the right. Left, middle, right. LCD, top, top, top. Cancel. What are we left with? 4X, cancel. What are we left with? 4X minus 6, cancel. What are we left with? X, X minus 6. Here's the wall. Let's multiply it out. 4X plus 4X minus 24 x squared minus 6x. Yeah, the terms 8x minus 24. x squared minus 6x. Everybody good to there so far? Now what do we do? Get a zero, right? This is one. You just got to know this instinctively. When you see x squared with an equal sign, get a zero. Get a zero where? Left side or right side? It, the, uh, yeah, it could be either side. It's always the opposite side from where the x squared currently is. Right now, the x squared is on the right side. So that means I want to get a zero on the left side, opposite side. So that means yank these guys over. Just grab both those guys and pull them over. Grab the 8x and pull it over. Grab the minus 24. Pull it over. You get 0 equals x squared minus 6x minus 8x plus 24. Signs change, right, when things jump to the other side. That gets my zero. We good with that? Let's see if I have some room to squeeze it in up here. So zero equals x squared minus 6x minus 8x minus 14x plus 24. Now what do we do? Factor. What two numbers? Multiply to be 24, add to be minus 4. 6 and 4? No. 12 and 2. Oh, you're right. 12 and 2. 
7, 2. Uh, both negative, huh? To make negative 14 in the middle, and two negatives multiplied be positive. So that means x minus 12 is 0. Remember, you set each one equal to 0. Because the two things times to equal 0, either one could be 0. And so that means that x is 12. When you jump that 12 over, jump that 2 over, or x is 2. Now, that's funny. How do we know what the end? Is it 12 and 2? Are those the two answers? Remember, we did this problem before. Is it coming back to you now? So, yeah, these are all problems we've done before. Yeah, how do you find? They're going to ask you to find George and Tim. How, how do I do that? Is it, it's not 12 and 2, then what is it? How do you do it? Yeah, you go back to the A and the B. That's Tim and George. I don't know which one's which yet, but I know they are the two people. The A and the B are the two individuals. So you plug into the A formula, you plug into the B formula. So one of them is just X. So one of them is just X. But the other is X minus 6. So subtract 6. Subtract 6 from 12, you get 6. And subtract 6 from 2, you get negative 4. That's impossible. Right? So we're saying the two answers are either 12 and 6, which they must be, or 2 and negative 4, which they may not be. You can't have a negative time to do something. So these two we throw away. Remember that? They're coming back. See what I did there? The two answers are not 12 and 2. They're, those are both x. The answers are, are what's in A and B slots, x and x minus 6. So I had to find the x minus 6 going with each of those x's. So subtract 6, subtract 6. When you get negative, throw those two away. So the answers are 12 and 6. Now who's who? Which one's George and which one's Tim? That's cake now. Just look at the words. George is six fewer hours. So which one's George? George is the six. He's six fewer. Tim must be the 12. It's cake at the end. You know what to do at the end. Just look at the words. That was tricky stuff, though, at the end, because a lot of people will get to the X and feel like they're done. The answers are 12 and 2, and that won't be there. Choose none of the above, and that would be a bummer. Or after doing a lot of good work all the way to there, it'd be a bummer not to get the credit on the problem because you didn't quite know how to land the plane. Of course, not landing a plane is a problem for air aircraft. I can do everything but land. I'm good, except for the landing. Oh, well, that's pretty good. No, that's not. Not going to work. Yeah, so you got to be able to land that plane, right? Everybody see how we did that in the end? Why did we do that? Because we're plugging into the A and the B. The answers aren't X and X. They're X and X minus 6. So you've got to find the x minus 6 going with each of them. All right, you've got it. So spend time looking at that. So there's, there's the question. 14 trees for 17 pounds of coffee. How many trees for 429 pounds of coffee? So these will be the easiest kind of word problem. There'll be one of these on the exam on Monday. This one, I'd like more of these, less of those other crazy ones. Uh, so um, how do you do it? How do you do these counts? Ratio, which means what? Two equal fractions, huh? It's going to always be A over B is C over D, isn't it? Just two equal fractions and then cross multiply. So um, I'm going to go, um, what does it say? So 14 trees over 17 pounds. So 14 trees over 17 pounds. If you, It might help you. You don't have to write the units down. Or but it might keep you straight, trees and coffee. 14 trees, 17 pounds of coffee. Other side, X trees for 429 pounds of coffee, huh? Like that, make sure you just get this. Sometimes the X is on the bottom, sometimes it's on the top, just sort of depends. Remember, we did the fishing one as well. Remember the fish one? Tag over total for the first catch it equals tag over total for the second. So that might be the one that's on the exam on Monday. I don't even remember. So um, make sure you know that. You put that in your 3x5 card. Remember, you want to make your 3x5 card as you do this practice exam. 
because it has everything on it. So you'll have everything you need on your 3 by 5 card, both sides, right? So how do we solve this equation? Cross multiply. 14 times 4, 29 is 17 times x. Somebody got a number there? 6006 is 17x. Last step to get x alone. Divided by 17, x equals 353. Just straight on? So 353.29, so it says round, so 353. There we go. That's all we have time.